Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today we, conti we continue talking about m matrices as uh, linear operators. Um, so this is lecture number three in the course called Mass Plus and Problems, presented on Unizor.com. Now on the same Unizor.com website you can find a prerequisite course <coughs> Excuse me, called um, Mass for Teens, and there are other courses uh, like Physics for Teens, uh, Relativity for All, and others. Now, um, I suggest you to watch this lecture directly from the Unizor.com because um, every lecture is supplemented with detailed notes. Notes are basically like a piece of a textbook which is exactly dedicated to the same material as the lecture itself. So on one page, um, uh, web page, you will have reference to, you, you will have basically video and notes which contain the same material but in written material, in the written form. Okay, so, um, matrices as linear operators, so this is as I was saying, third lecture, and this lecture will be only about one particular case of three-dimensional matrix, and we will look for eigenvalues and um, eigenvectors <coughs> excuse me, um, of this particular matrix. So it's just an exercise in calculations. Now all the calculations are presented in notes for this lecture, so you don't have to like write anything. It, it's right in front of your eyes on the web page if you watch the lecture from unizor.com. Um, what else? Um, the website unizor.com is totally free. Um, no ads, no strings attached. You don't even have to sign in <laughs> if you don't want to. Okay, so here is the matrix which I would like actually to completely um, analyze as far as eigenvalues as, and eigenvectors. And uh, in this particular case, um, I'm going to three dimensional uh, matrices. Before, I was only talking about two dimensional just to simplify uh, the theory, the approach, the concepts. Uh, now I will go into a little bit more calculations uh, for three-dimensional matrix. But again, as I was um, saying before, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's all applicable to n-dimensional matrices and uh, even linear operators in uh, abstract Hilbert spaces. So, three-dimensional matrix which is given is the following. 4, 8, minus 4, 4, minus 2, minus 4, minus 8, minus 4, minus 10. So I specifically chose some matrix which will have integer, <laughs> obviously, a eigenvalue to ease the calculations. Now, here is a very important point. Um, I am giving you one particular eigenvalue. And the first one is equal to 10. And I would like actually you to find lambda 2 and lambda 3 and uh, corresponding vectors eigenvectors. So that's the task. Given the matrix and given one eigenvalue, we have to def uh, determine two other eigenvalues and for each eigenvalue we have to find corresponding eigenvector. So that's the task. Alright, so let's start doing this. <coughs> Now, why I gave one particular eigenvalue and not asking you to find all three 
will be just obvious a little bit later. Okay, so if I would like to find eigenvalue, if you have a matrix and you multiply it by some vector, now if this vector is uh, eigenvector and lambda is eigenvalue, then this is a scalar, it's supposed to be equal like this. So whenever you apply the matrix to a vector, it would be the same as just stretching or squeezing vector without changing its direction by some factor lambda which is eigenvector. So that's the definition of eigenvalue and eigenvector uh, for the matrix. Okay, now from this follows, and this is basically a, a repetition of whatever I was talking on the previous lecture. Well, it means that if my vector v is uh, v1, v2, v3. These are components. These are vectors. These are components of one particular vector. Doesn't really matter. The first, the second is just any vector. Then, if this is my matrix and this is my uh, eigen uh, vector and then this eigenvalue, which I would like actually to um, uh, find out, then let's just do whatever the arithmetic is supposed to be. It means that for my uh, 8 4, 8, minus 4, 4, minus 2, minus 4, minus 8, minus 4, minus 10. If I will multiply it by vector v1, v2, v3, <coughs> I should be equal to lambda times v1, v2, v3, right? So that's what my condition actually is, this one, um, if I will express it in uh, matrix format, all right? <coughs> so, um, what it basically means is the following, that 4 times, now what's the component of the product of a matrix and the vector? It's a vector. Now the first component is first row times the vector, second component is second row times the vector, and uh, the third component of the resulting vector is the third row of the matrix times vector. So basically it means 4v1 plus 8v2 minus 4v3. That's the first component, right? The second component of this product is this times this. 4v1 minus 2v2 minus 4v3. And the third component minus 8 v1 minus 4 v2 and minus 10 v3 and that's the resulting vector and it's supposed to be equal to this and multiplication of uh, scalar by uh, vector is basically all components are multiplied lambda v2 and lambda v3 right So that's the result. Okay, so from follows is the following. If I will uh, have, th now this is vector and this is vector. If they are equal, their difference is equal to zero, right? So let me just calculate their difference. Component by component, right? So this component minus this component should be equal to zero. This component minus this should be equal to zero and corresponding with the third one, which means what? It means four minus lambda v1, right? If I will subtract plus eight v2 minus four v3 is equal to zero. 
four v one uh, minus two and minus lambda. So it's minus uh, two plus lambda, right? V two. <coughs> Uh, is equal and, and minus 4v3 is equal to 0 and finally minus 8v1 minus 4v2 and minus 10 and minus lambda so it's plus lambda v3 is equal to 0 <coughs> Now, what is this? This is a system of three uh, linear equations with, uh, well, actually four unknowns, but relative to the vector, it's three unknown vectors. And what's very interesting is that one trivial solution, v1, v2, and v3 equals to zero, is obviously fits this particular um, system of equations regardless of lambda. So the null vector always will satisfy <coughs> this particular quality. No matter what matrix you are multiplying null vector, you'll get null vector. That's trivial, that's not interesting. It's not what we are looking for. We are looking for real vectors, which are eigenvectors, not the null vector. Now, if we are looking for a solution to three system, a uh, system of three uh, linear equations with three unknowns, if the deter uh, determinant of this matrix of coefficients, which is matrix of only these coefficients, if this matrix has non-zero uh, determinant, then solution is always unique. We know this from the previous course of um, mass 14 where we were talking about linear a uh, system of linear equations. So if you have n linear equations with n unknowns and determinant of the matrix n by n matrix um, of coefficients of this system is not equal to zero, then solution exists and it's unique. Now we found one solution. V1, V3, V2, V3 is equal to zero. So we don't want it to be unique, which means determinant must be equal to zero and that gave us basically an equation for uh, coefficients and lambda is part of this equation so we will have an equation for lambda <coughs> so the matrix uh, this matrix this matrix of coefficients must be, must have, this matrix should have determinant equals to zero. That's a necessary condition, that's a necessary condition for, uh, let me just take another marker. It's a necessary condition for um, having some non-trivial solution to our uh, problems, right? So, as soon as I open this thing, okay. Now, let's just have this particular equation, uh, the determinant of this equals to zero. That will be equation of uh, lambda. So we will be able to find eigenvalue because of that. So determinant of the coefficient where lambda is part of this equals to zero leads us to equation for lambda. Now, the determinant uh, of this matrix is basically a function of coefficients. Now, if it's three, day, three by three uh, ma matrix, um, then its determinant uh, is sum of products of the coefficients and uh, I actually remember uh, the formula it's basically you have to first the main diagonal 
product of main diagonal uh, with plus and uh, a couple of triangles this triangle which is parallel with a uh, base parallel to the main diagonal also with a plus and this diagonal this tri 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 triangle so, so, sorry so that's all with a plus with a minus goes another main diagonal and it's two triangles this one this and this one this so this is parallel to this and that's why it also goes with a minus sign so if you will do all this multiplication uh, you will come up with certain equation and uh, I, al I already made all these calculations and I'll just give you the result minus um, lambda third degree minus 8 lambda square plus um, 108 lambda and plus 720 equals to 0. As you see, this is an equation of the third degree. Now, why I gave you that there is one solution already? Just to ease uh, basically the problem. Because if I didn't do this, you would have to solve the equation of the third degree, which is not nice, quite frankly. Um, but if I gave you one solution, then you know that this polynomial is supposed to be divisible by lambda minus 10. So, it actually, this left part can be represented at lambda minus 10. By the way, if you will uh, put 10 into this equation, let's check if it's really a solution. Um, lambda cube is 1000 with a minus sign and lambda square is 100, so it's 800, so it's minus 1800. And here, if lambda is 10, it's 1080, and 720, it's also 1800. So that's equal to zero, this is minus, this is plus. So yes, 10 is solution to this equation. Which means the left part can be uh, expressed as lambda minus 10 times something. And something is very easy to determine by dividing the polynomial by lambda minus 10. Again, that's part of the uh, standard material, how to divide one polynomial to another. I'll give you the result already. So it's minus lambda square, um, minus 18 lambda, and uh, minus 72. equals to zero. Well, you can check. Lambda, lambda uh, square would be lambda cube. Now, square would be uh, plus lambda square times 10. It would be plus, so it's plus 10 lambda square and 18 lambda and lambda, and this is a minus, would be minus 18, so it's minus 18 and plus 10, so it's minus this. Now, plain lambda would be 10 times 180 with a plus. Uh, and minus 72 would be 180 minus 72, 102. And uh, the free member, 10 and 72, both with minus, so that's plus. So that's correct. So, now you have to solve the quadratic equation, which is obviously much easier. And uh, the, um, uh, you can actually put pluses here as well. It's equal to zero, so that's kind of easier. So it's minus 9 plus minus square root of 81 minus 72. This is 9, so it's minus 9 plus minus square root of 9 is 3. So you have two more... Uh, one is minus 6 and another is minus 12. So we found three eigenvalues. Great. Now we have to find the corresponding eigenvectors. Now what I will do is 
I will find eigenvectors only for 1, for minus 12, and uh, the notes for the lecture contain exactly the same kind of calculations for minus 6 and minus 10. So you can just, I suggest you to do the same and then check against the notes whether you will have the same vectors as, as I did. Okay, so um, I don't think I need this anymore. So I have to find vector only for v1. I'll use just v, which is equal to v1, v2, v3. I have to find this vector in such a way that the matrix A, which is this one, times this vector V, will give me minus 12 V. I'm doing only for one particular eigenvalue for minus 12. All right. Well, let's just do it. Um, matrix times this vector would be uh, another vector, which is 4 V1 plus 8 V2 and minus 4 v3 and it's supposed to be equal to now that's the first component of the result the second component would be 4 v1 minus 2 v2 minus 4 v3 and the uh, third component would be minus 8 v1 minus 4 v2 and minus 10 v3. That's the third component. Now, this vector is minus 12 times this, which is minus 12 v1, minus 12 v2, and minus 12 v3. So, this is basically condition on v1, v2, and v3 to the vector, eigenvector v, which we are looking for. Now, it's three equations, but we know that the coefficients of this particular, if we will put everything, well, let's put everything into one, so that would be 16 here, and zero here. Now here it would be uh, <coughs> plus 10, Minus 12 would be plus 12, so it's plus 10. And 0 here. And here would be minus 10 plus 12, so it would be plus 2. And 0 here. Okay, so system of 3. Uh, equations with three variables, 0, 0, 0, as we know, is obviously a solution which we are not interested in. We need another solution. And we know that the matrix of these coefficients is equal to 0. Determinant of this matrix is equal to 0. That's what allows to have other solutions. And determinant equals to 0 means these three equations are linearly connected. So it's not really like three equations. It's you can actually have only two of them because the third one would be a combination of the rest. And now, um, uh, what did I say? If <coughs> uh, the first one and the third one, look, if the third one is multiplied by minus 2, this would be 16, by minus 2 would be plus 8, and this would be minus 4. So basically this is the same as this one multiplied by minus 2, which means this uh, equation not really needed, doesn't really bring any new information to us. So it's a system of actually two equations with three unknowns. But at the same time, you also know that if one particular vector is an eigenvector, any proportional vector will always be the same kind of eigenvector. So let's say it's uh, 1, 2, 3, then 2, 4, 6 also would be proportional because if 1, 2, 3 is multiplied by matrix by some 
uh, coefficients, then if you double the size, it will still double. It, you, you, you matrix retains the direction of the eigenvector, and coefficients of propor proportionality is always the same, obviously. I did prove it, by the way, in the previous lecture, more like uh, rigorously. So right now, all I'm saying is that it, yes, it's true, it's two equations with three unknowns, but we don't really care about uh, proportionality, so we can have one particular unknown have some particular value and then the rest would be proportional to it. So let's just express everything in terms of V1, let's say. Okay. <coughs> First of all, let's just divide everything by 2, that's easier. So that would be 2. That would be 5. That would be 2. That would be 4. Minus 4. That would be minus 2. And that would be 1. Okay? Okay. So, from the rest, pr from the second one, we, we have that v3 is equal to uh, 4v1 plus 2v2, right? If we will put it to the right, v3. And now we will substitute it into this one. So we will have 2v1 plus 5v2 minus 2v3 minus 8v v1 and minus 4v2 equals to 0. So it's uh, minus 6v1 plus v2 is equal to 0, from which v2 is equal to 6v1. And using this, using this, substitute 6v1, we will have that v3 is equal to um, 4v1 and 12v1, so it's 16v1. Okay, so our vector is v1, uh, v2, which is 6v1, and v3, which is 16v1. Regardless of the coefficient v1, actually, we can put v1 is equal to 1, we will have vector 1, 6, 16. We can put v1 equal to minus 1, it would be minus 1, minus 6, minus 16. All these vectors are proportional to each other, which means they, are, they, they have exactly the same direction which means they are all eigenvalues. So if you want to find one particular eigenvalue, I'll choose the simplest one. So I'll put v1 is equal to 1, and my eigenvalue would be this. 1, 6, 16. That's my eigenvalue. Uh, eigen, eigenvector, sorry. So for eigenvalue minus 2, we have Mi minus 12, we have eigenvector 1, 6, and 16, and any other proportional to this vector, okay? Now, the only thing is, I would like actually to check it, if it's really true. Well, let's check it. Let's multiply our matrix by this vector. My first component would be 4 times 1, plus 8 times 16, plus minus 4 uh, times 6, uh, uh, six 16. Okay, so it's 4 um, plus 48 minus 4, 16, minus 64. That's my first component. My second component is 4 again, minus 2, it's minus 12, and minus 64, that's my second component, 
my third component would be minus 8 minus 4 that's minus 24 and minus 10 is minus 160 so that's my vector which is the result of multiplication of this matrix by this vector now what is this uh, 52 minus 64 minus 12 um, minus uh, 8 72 um, minus 32 minus 192 equals minus 12 times 1 6 and 16 minus 12 is minus 12 minus 12 times 6 is 72 minus 12 times 16 is 192 so this is our eigenvector you see vector is the same and proportionality coefficient is this one so basically that's the proof that we have found correct eigenvector now two other eigenvectors can be found by doing exactly the same which I did with minus 12 you can do with minus 6 and minus 10 and check it against the notes for this lecture. So that's what I'm suggesting. Finish this particular calculations for two other eigenvectors. Go to the notes in unisor.com, courses, mass, plus, and problems. Uh, then the uh, partition is called matrices, and this is matris matrices 03. Check it out. I hope you will be exactly satisfied with your answers. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.